Hello, everyone. Good morning, and welcome to today's webinar entitled Brazil's Education Sector Today, International Education Market Updates, Trends, and Developments. My name is Gabriel Oliveira, and I'm the coordinator of programs and events here at BCCIE. Today, I'm additionally joined by my colleague, Tom Wang, who will be on the back end answering any of the technical questions or questions in general that you may have throughout this presentation. And just a reminder, uh, we work for the British Columbia Council for International Education, and we work to advance the interests of the international education sector into secondary institutions, um, language, and uh, K-12. Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that at BCCIE, we live and work on the unceded traditional territories of the Coast Salish peoples of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Salish nations. So just moving on to a few housekeeping notes. Um, today, as soon as you join the webinar, you'll notice that there's a control panel to the top right section of your screen. And this control panel is very important to interact with us, but also to manage a few of the um, things that you'll need to ask questions. Uh, so first thing I want to point out is that you have joined this webinar muted, and you will remain muted throughout the presentation. However, we know that you have questions, and we do encourage you to ask those questions. You can do so by scrolling over to the control panel and typing your questions down in the question box. Um, Additionally, I'd like to remind you if you have any technical questions, you can ask those as well in the question box. And um, as one more reminder, we will share the slide deck of this presentation, and we will also share a recording of the presentation as well. Just one thing, we'll share a recording of the presentation, but not of the Q&A section of the webinar. And now moving on, I'd like to introduce our panelists Today, so today we're joined by Fernanda Albano and Isabella Duarte. And uh, Fernanda Albano is a trade commissioner in education at the Consulate General of Canada in Sao Paulo, in southern Brazil. And Isabella Duarte is a trade commissioner, also in education, who works in the city of Recife in northern Brazil and works in the Government of Canada Trade Office. So with that, I'd like to formally introduce Fernanda, who is your first speaker, and pass on the mic to you. Hello, Fernanda. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank VCCIE for the invitation to participate in this webinar. I hope all of you uh, here today are staying safe and healthy in these challenging times. Uh, as mentioned, I'm the Trade Commissioner covering education in the state of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Uh, Brazil is a priority country for Canada in the education sector, and we have six Trade Commissioners covering education in the different regions of Brazil. So we have one in each of our offices in the country. In this slide uh, on your screen, you see our team in Brazil. We have Isabella Duarte, who is here today uh, from our office in Recife. She covers the north and northeast of the country. We also have other four trade commissioners covering education throughout Brazil. Rafael, who covers education for the states of Rio de Janeiro and Espírito Santo. Angela, who covers education for the center states of Brazil and is based out of our embassy in Brasilia. France, who covers education in the state of Minas Gerais, and Paulo, who covers education in the three states in the south of Brazil. If you wish to engage in these different regions or have any questions that are specific to any of these markets, please do not hesitate to contact our team in Brazil. Uh, we are here to support your efforts in the country, to provide you with qualified contacts and market intelligence. So please uh, don't hesitate to contact us. Uh, so uh, Canada is, is very well perceived as a study and research destination here in Brazil for all levels of education. And we can say that uh, some of its greatest advantages are uh, its very strong brand, which gives Brazilian politicians, elite high schools, agents and top ranked universities, as well as the public, a very positive perception of, of Canada. For a Brazilian student, Canada is clearly perceived as a high quality education and research destination with a high quality of life. Uh, Brazil offers a number of positive market entry factors in the education sector, which include a large target population of potential students and pockets within this target population with sufficient ability to pay for studies abroad. 
Uh, we also, uh, foreign degrees are very well regarded among Brazilian employers, and they're also seen as a way to gain an edge in a competitive do domestic job market. So education in Brazil is offered in both public and private institutions, although quality varies greatly between the two of them. So one of the challenges in Brazil's uh, public education sector is the overall, overall poor quality of the public primary and secondary systems. Although the vast majority of children and youth are enrolled in basic education at 10 public schools, private high schools do offer the best quality education in Brazil. For public universities, on the other hand, uh, they are usually among the best ranked in the country, uh, although some private universities are also very reputable. And this is also uh, one thing that can be considered uh, for the public. Uh, Brazilians are used to paying for education and depending on which institution in Brazil they, they go to, they pay uh, as much as they would pay for uh, education in Canada. Brazil has a population of approximately 210 million people. Uh, there are approximately uh, 48 million students in K-12 schools in Brazil. In 2018, there were more than 8 million Brazilians in colleges and universities undergrad programs the vast majority of them, 75% in private institutions. And there were over 364,000 at the graduate level, most of them 84% in public institutions. So these numbers are of course being impacted by COVID-19 and we are seeing Brazilians interrupting their post-secondary studies because of the economic impact they suffered due to the pandemic and also parents moving their children from private to public K-12 schools. The situation is, is very fluid at this point. We don't have uh, many numbers that can, can show a clear picture of, of what the impact is, is going to be. Uh, but Isabella and I will be talking a little bit more about the impacts of COVID-19 in Brazil in the last segment uh, of this webinar. Uh, it's also interesting to, to note that of the approximately 41,000 private schools in Brazil, K-12, I mean, it is estimated that approximately 3% of them are bilingual schools, most of them Portuguese English, but also Portuguese German and Portuguese French. And it's also interesting to highlight that we have 30 international schools that offer the IB diploma in the country. Uh, so Brazil has been the number one source country for Languages Canada's program since 2018. Brazil is also the number one source country of students in Latin America and the eighth in the world for Canada. On December 31st uh, last year, uh, there were more than 14,000 Brazilians with a valid study permit in Canada. And this brings me to the topic of visas. Uh, as of May 1st, 2017, Brazilian citizens are able to fly to or transit through Canada with an electronic travel authorization, which we call ETA. So instead of a visitor visa, uh, they can apply for the ETA if they have held a Canadian visitor visa in the past 10 years, or if they currently have a valid US non-immigrant visa. Uh, if citizens of Brazil do not meet uh, the eligibility criteria for an ETA, then they need a visitor visa to travel to Canada for studies lasting less than six months. Students going to Canada for uh, studies longer than six months require a visa and a study permit uh, for which a medical exam is required. The approval rates for study permits in Brazil are historically quite high, uh, around 80%, I would say. So, uh, and we also see that the postgraduate work permit program uh, encourages Brazilians to go to Canada to do full diplomas, as immigration is often the ultimate goal of Brazilians uh, when pursuing post-secondary studies in, in Canada. Culturally speaking, uh, to develop a solid relationship with a partner in Brazil, uh, we say that face-to-face -face interaction is important and in the past we would recommend that a visit to Brazil be made at least once a year. However, as the current situation with the pandemic is uncertain, we do not know when such travels would be feasible again. Um, however, uh, it is still important to maintain regular contact through the year with your partners in Brazil and you can use online platforms for that. For direct student recruitment, uh, the participation in the international studies fairs in Brazil uh, is also something that we uh, would recommend in order to create a direct link with potential students. And uh, Canadian institutions have great visibility at EduCanada fairs that take place in Brazil in March and September, October. 
And although at this point, the Edu Canada fairs that usually take place uh, in the fall, in September, October, uh, is still maintained, we understand that it might be canceled or postponed depending on the development of the pandemic. Uh, FPP, which is the organizer of the fair, uh, recently did a virtual Edu Canada fair for Latin America, uh, in which uh, there were more than 6,000 students in the region. 12% uh, of them were Brazilians. They did a survey with, uh, with students throughout the world and 74% of Brazilians stated that they would join an online event with international universities in order to chat live with their representatives. So um, this is also one um, alternative for recruitment in these uh, times of pandemic to stay connected uh, through online events. Uh, to reach the target audience in Brazil, uh, uh, we recommend to use Portuguese. Communication in Portuguese is, is really key. Um, it is important for the Brazilian student to be comfortable in his and her understanding of the information. And although Brazilians uh, can understand uh, Spanish, uh, this usually is an insufficient workaround and could be interpreted by the Brazilian public as a lack of interest in its own language. So when coming to Brazil, we recommend that uh, you have your brochures, your material in Portuguese to make sure that the students are comfortable and understand the information that you want them to, to be receiving. Uh, two other very important characteristics of the market recruitment-wise are that it is an agent-driven market with approximately 70% of Brazilians going through an agent to purchase their program to study abroad. And as you may know, agents in Brazil charge a commission to the educational institutions, not to the client. Uh, therefore, having a reputable network of agents in Brazil tends to be a good recruitment strategy, especially in these times when, when travels to, to the markets are, are not really possible. Uh, and the second thing I would highlight is that Brazilians are extremely active on social media. We have 120 million Brazilians on Facebook, which is the fourth largest nationality on this platform. We're also third on Instagram with 82 million users and sixth for, face, uh, for Twitter with 14.5 million. So uh, we recommend that you keep that in mind to raise the profile of your institution uh, to be active on social media. Um, and also to remember that videos tend to draw viewers' attention more than other regular posts. So you can use your alumni as ambassadors to talk about the experience of studying in your institution, showing the campus uh, on, on these um, videos. Uh, these are all good strategies to engage with the Brazilian public as well. So uh, in Brazil, there are no consolidated data for student mobility abroad. However, BELTA, which is the Brazilian Education and Language Travel Association, performs an annual market research with education agents and students across the country, and that is a good indicator for determining the main destination countries for pursuing studies abroad. So for 15 years in a row now, the studies show that Canada has been the number one destination for Brazilian students. This is mainly because of uh, language programs. Uh, Canada is the number one uh, destination for, for English uh, uh, programs for Brazilians. Uh, and also according to Belta's preliminary results for 2020, uh, agencies in Brazil sent approximately 3,086 uh, 3, uh, 386,000 Brazilians to study abroad in 2019. So this translates into a 1.3 billion US dollar sector. Um, last year, we participated in, in, in the edition of this research. Uh, we just received the preliminary results uh, earlier in April this year. Uh, we took uh, that opportunity to include questions specific on Canada together for further market intelligence that was specific uh, for Canada. And I'm going to be sharing some of these findings with you uh, now. So the study found that most, uh, the most popular programs for Brazilians coming to Canada, according to, to the agents, are English programs, uh, which is followed by high schools and summer programs. Uh, college degrees come in fourth. Uh, French uh, comes in sixth and fifth. Uh, Canada is, is the second uh, most popular destination for French programs for Brazilians after France. Uh, 
And then certificates and diplomas, uh, those short-term career focused ones, uh, followed by uh, undergrad at universities and uh, grad programs, masters and PhDs uh, come in eighth. So the same market study also provided an insight on the decision-making process of these students. Uh, most students stated that their first point of contact with Canada as a study destination was through online searches, uh, followed by recommendations from friends and family. In third place is the advice from agents, followed closely by education fairs. It is interesting to highlight that almost 12% of them uh, said that it was through YouTube, and 4.3% through Instagram. Facebook does show in this uh, survey with 1.9% after television and magazines. So uh, at this point, we would say that it's no longer a very effective platform to promote uh, your institutions at. Uh, we would say if you can and use Instagram or YouTube instead, it has more visibility to the Brazilian audience. We also asked which provinces they were familiar with and considered for their program, and British Columbia showed as the most popular province for Brazilians, with more than 61% of people interviewed stating they were familiar with the province and considered studying there. However, when asked where they actually went for studies abroad, Ontario shows as the first destination, with almost 48% of students having chosen this province followed by British Columbia with 32%. So for a reference, Quebec shows in third with, with less than half of that, with 15%. As for the motivations of this choice, 48% uh, stated that they were motivated by the qualities of the city and what it has to offer, which also includes um, uh, the touristic um, opportunities of, 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 of that city. Uh, and then 18% uh, by the weather, 11% due to English being the main language, 7% because of French, and 4% due to cost benefit. For those students that chose BC as a study destination, we see as uh, the, the, the most popular reasons for choosing this province range from uh, milder weather to infrastructure of education institutions, proximity to the beach, uh, recommendation from friends, being a less busy city and the touristic attractions. So now that I've covered mostly uh, about the overview of the market and recruitment, Isabella will now talk a little bit about partnerships. Fernanda, and thanks again to BCCIE for this opportunity and thank you for being part of the audience today. Uh, as as, as Fernanda explained, the COVID-19 outbreak has undoubtedly had a huge impact on the international education sector. And in Brazil, it's no different. And given the current scenario, students as well as education institutions are having to be even more creative, innovative, and particularly resilient to find new ways to navigate what we're calling the new normal. And which is very much that of a textbook book VUCA scenario of volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. Perhaps this new normal scenario in the short run, in the short run, is that there are many challenges, but in Brazil it might actually bring a few opportunities in the longer run. We believe that given the federal government response or the lack of it to the COVID-19 outbreak could actually be an additional factor that might help drive recruitment up in the longer run. Um, please note that in Brazil, the idea of studying abroad is very much associated with the idea of a dream and a long, lifelong plan. So these dreams, these wishes, they may have been postponed now because of COVID-19, but in the current scenario, but I very much doubt that will stop many Brazilian students to going abroad or studying abroad, either for a diploma or for language. I think it's something that's ingrained now in the, in the Brazilian students. And I am very confident that it's gonna regain momentum once things are more stable. And we, given the, the scenario as such, we just wanted to share some pointers with you that we may want to consider when you're forming new partnerships in Brazil or just enhancing new existing, one, existing ones. And for example, with high ed, uh, education institutions, we highlighted the federal universities. 
And we'd like to, to mention that it's important that you get to know the institutions that you want to partner with and try to identify some areas of com commonality. And we want to reach out now to, to your old partners and find out new areas of excellence, what they've been doing in the past few years, in the last few months, or now that they have time to, to regroup, given the, 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 the scenario of the COVID-19. And one thing that, you, that we would like to, to, for you to bear in mind is that competition is fierce right now in Brazil. And at the moment, most of the wealthy students are being, normally, they, uh, paradoxically, they are in the federal universities, which is free to all. They're being coveted by many other countries. I mean, just like Canada is interested, Canadian institutions, other, other countries are also in, in, interested in the Brazilian market. Uh, and some of some of these countries are getting a lot of, of traction in Brazil, given certain facilities or, or advantage that, that they are offering the students. But having said that, uh, uh, there's still a lot of uh, a lot of interest in Canada. And one of one of the things that we have noticed from talking to to the international offices and talking to students is that the most, most students and most international offices are very much looking for a two-way avenue type of, of, of collaboration or, or MOU and that ha may have some research element included. Um, we personally, I personally think that the COVID-19 has brought joint research and collaboration to the top of the priority of those institutions, in particular the federal university ones that you may be familiar with. Um, another institution that we would like to 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 find uh, to sort of remind you that they they can be an interesting market and interesting niche to you is that of the federal institutes. They are historically more vocational oriented, but in the past they have started the 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 own mobility program since the extinction of the Science Without Borders program. And one example that I would like to highlight of, of such partnerships is that between the Federal Institute of Paraíba, which is in the northeast of Brazil, uh, is the neighboring state of to Pernambuco, where I'm based, uh, is that they had they they started their own mobility program with their own funding and created their the, 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 the own setup, and they chose a language school in Ontario. To, to set up their, their, mobility, their own mobility program, right? Although they had limited resources, they were able to find a middle ground in which they could come up with a template that would be acceptable to both parties. I mean, both students and, and, and lectures, as well as the, the, the language school itself. Um, another, another potential partnership that you may find in Brazil, and I think there's still some room to, to create even more ties, is that with local, state, and municipal governments. Um, for many years now, the state of Pernambuco, Paraíba, and Maranhão have been running a youth exchange program to, to Canada and other countries, but Canada has, is receiving more, about 60% of the, the, the students go, uh, participate in these programs. Maybe the, 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 I, I believe that the, the British Columbia has received some, some students from the Win the World program. And maybe this is something that will be applicable to other states in a post-pandemic scenario. We don't know yet the, what it's going to be like, but it's something that we would like you to keep in mind. Perhaps when, you, when you're talking to your local agents or maybe in the, in the foreseeable future when you're visiting Brazil. And another, area, another potential, uh, op, op, potential niche for you is that of the SENAC and SENAI Institutes of Technology. In Brazil, the System S, or Sistema S, for those uh, that speak Portuguese, is a key player in upgrading managerial and workforce skills. More notably, SENAI, the National Service for Industrial Training, is the main training organization that caters to manufacturing. And I think they operate now about 25 uh, innovation institutes and 61 technology institutes in Brazil. And they are very strong, very focused on technology and new technologies and innovation. So if your if your institution in, is has you know courses that might be interesting to this kind of, of institution, by all means look into that. They might not have websites in, in, in English, but there is a lot of English speakers 
part of them or the or this of Senai network. Senac is the National Service for Apprenticeship in Trade and is the main organization involved in the delivery of management and workforce training in the trade and services sector, which accounts for a very large share of the Brazilian economy. So both of these institutions have flagship courses which can be explored for partnerships. Um, just to give you an example, uh, the English course content delivered by this English, uh, the Senac in Recife, comes from a Canadian institution. So this is something that if, if you haven't looked at in the past, maybe something that you can look now and, you know, it's something that can yield some, some different partnerships for you. And that brings us to the next point, which is that of corporate training. Um, this is a bit of a difficult one to, to, to talk. And although we do not know at the moment how this is going to be in the near future, given that some companies are currently trying to avoid Chapter 11, there might be a paradigm shift from in-person training because some of the large institutions in, in Brazil, they tend to, they invest, they used to invest heavily in training and training abroad. So maybe they're going to go towards a more long distance training and again, if you have new content, if you have new courses, if you have new opportunities for these companies, maybe this is the time for to, to knock on their door. And I'm just gonna go now, pass it to Fernanda. She's gonna start talking a little bit more to, uh, about the, the effects that COVID-19 had in Brazil. Fernanda. Thank you, Isabella, over to you. Thank you. Uh, so, um, Brazil, as most countries, has been greatly impacted by COVID-19. Um, as you may be seeing on the news, we are now, I think, the second country with the most uh, cases in the world. Uh, we had social, social isolation measures uh, determined by the states, and uh, they would vary depending on the region. Now many states are working on plans to reopen the economy. Uh, for the education sector at all levels, they transition to online and most higher education institutions will finish their semesters online. Uh, some public universities decided to cancel classes altogether. And this is uh, due to challenges faced by these institutions because um, these public institutions uh, their, their students uh, have uneven access to quality internet, to computers, to smartphones. Uh, so the decision of many federal universities to cancel classes was because they, they found that uh, it wouldn't be fair with students uh, for such an uneven access to, to these tools. Um, at the beginning of the pandemic, we had commercial flights reduced by 90%. Air Canada suspended flights in Brazil on March 28th, and it is currently planned to resume them on August the 2nd. The USA has also banned travel, travelers coming from Brazil as of May uh, 29th. Regarding uh, visas for Brazilian students, uh, the visa application centers in Brazil are currently closed. Our visa section, which is located in Sao Paulo, is processing urgent cases and online applications only. Uh, however, as the visa application centers are closed, they are not really finalizing cases, not really issuing visas. Uh, they are mostly uh, refusing uh, those cases that would already be refused uh, because they, they cannot uh, issue and, 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 and uh, stick the visas on the passports, basically. Uh, Brazilian economy is being greatly impacted as well. Uh, IMF and the World Bank initially uh, forecasted uh, a drop of 5% uh, in GDP for 2020. Bank of America recently released an estimate that Brazil's economy would retract more than that, 7.7% this year. So uh, in addition to the expected increase in the unemployment rate, uh, some estimations point out it could double and reach 23%. Uh, the Brazilian government announced that 6.2 million Brazilians had been affected by the crisis by having reductions on their working hours and salaries or the suspension of their labor contracts. Uh, the Brazilian government has also informed that the request for unemployment benefits increased 39% in April when compared with March. 
Um, another challenge is the Brazilian currency. As you can see there, we had a great evaluation of our currency. Uh, on January the 2nd, it was 3.09, let's say. And last Friday, it was 3.78 when compared to the Canadian dollar. Um, as for students, FPP has recently done a survey with their database of students seeking to study abroad, among, among which were more than uh, 4.5 thousand Brazilians. Only 24 of them stated that the pandemic had not affected their plans to study abroad at all. 57% stated that uh, they had to postpone it, and 9% said that they no longer plan to study abroad because of the pandemic. When asked if, due to the COVID-19 crisis, they would consider replacing their study abroad program for an online program instead, only 17% of Brazilians stated that they would. So this shows that Brazilians tend to prefer the in-person experience than uh, the virtual experience of studying abroad. Another question that the survey uh, included was if the COVID-19 crisis had impacted their financial uh, situation forcing them to adapt the study abroad plans. 56% uh, of Brazilians stated that yes, they needed to consider cheaper options because of the pandemic. And 23% of them replied that they now needed to consider staying for last time than originally planned. So Isabella will now talk a little bit more about the COVID-19 in Brazil, challenges, uh, trends, and some possible opportunities uh, in the market. Over to Despite the, the, the previous email, oh, sorry, uh, slide, we believe that it's not all doom and gloom. And we, that's why we wanted to share some ideas, some thoughts with you on a post-COVID-19 scenario. And we, we still believe that, you know, it, it's, going, it's going to pick up. And we do recommend, suggest that in the current scenario, you keep engaging with potential students with your institutional partners and with your local agents that represent you. Brazilians like to be engaged. They, they want to be part of your institution. They want to feel that, that you know, that they, they matter. They, they, you know, it's like Fernanda said before, it's an experience. It's all about the experience. That's why they, they think it's so important that we, it, that they have this in-person experience. And, I think another another opportunity for you to 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 show what you you know what you the good things about yourselves. Um, Brazilians like this the Insta, Instagram ability factor. You know if you have a if you have a nice corner in your institution, highlight it, show it. People you know love saying, oh my god, I can imagine myself in this this particular college. So this is you know this is the time make sure because everyone has a lot of idle time in their hands and they are all over the Instagram and other or, or the social media trying to you know find where they're going to go in the post covid-19 so and like we said we've been saying all oh, this webinar digital promotion and creative innovative ways are you know really a big tool at the moment for recruitment Brazilians are very keen on the internet. They are very keen users of, of smartphones and everything. And if you can find ways to, to talk their lingo and to interact with them, you may position yourself in a, in a more competitive way and get your institution ahead of the pack. You know, this is, you have the tools, so use them because Brazilians love internet content. They love everything. So these are possi possible opportunities that you may include in your in your in your strategic development, in, you know, for the future, is to to enhance this experience, not just perhaps with the with Brazilians, but Latin America as a whole, because I think we have a lot of commonalities in, in terms of culture. We all love the internet, and we all love to post, post you know, these pictures of showing how you know the better half lives, and this is it. If you have a new, if you have a new program, if you have a new product, it's, if it's hybrid, maybe you know the students are going to start with a part doing a language course, and then they get they can get credits to go to to your your in-person course. You know, use the, the digital channels 
to, to advertise. Don't be shy, blow your trumpet and, and, and make sure they show, you know, that you're out there and you want them to go to your institution. And I think that's important that you keep your, your local agents in, in, engaged because they, just like the students, they also like to be part of the team. So this, this is a good strategy. If you, if you, if we find, you know, to the means to, 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 to have this, this huge, this chain, you know, students, local agents, everyone engaged, great. You know, if you have content in your blogs, make sure you promote it in Brazil because we, we like it, you know, students like it, Brazilians like it. And one thing that we wanted to, 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 to mention to you guys is that of price sensitivities, you know, Brazilian institutions and students very much price sensitive. Funding options would be a differential, scholarship, student loans, bus raise, if we, you know, whatever um, means you have. And I would like to raise your attention again that although Brazil is going through some economical turbulence, as Bernardo mentioned with exchange rates, so on and so forth, students have become very much price sensitive, sensitive and they're looking for value for money. So if this is something that you can accommodate, it's very much welcomed by students as well as local agents. So it's something that we would like to raise. It's, it's a, it's a, it might be a good tool for you to promote your, your strategy in Brazil. And last, but definitely not least, use your trade commission and network in Brazil. We are here to help. And you know, if you have any doubt, if there is anything that you, we haven't explained very well, make sure you, you talk to us and we're more than happy to, to, to talk to you. I'm gonna pass over to Fernanda now to wrap up and then if you have any questions, we'll be there. Yeah. Sorry, Fernanda. Uh, thank Sorry. you, Isabella. Uh, I, uh, once again, sure. I'd like to thank once again for the invitation and for everyone that joined this webinar. Uh, we will now take some questions and if you have any follow-up questions after this webinar, please do not hesitate to contact us. Awesome. Thank you so much, both Fernanda and Isabella, for this great content. Um, this was really very good updates um, and, of course, trends and opportunities as, as you uh, were mentioning in the end, Isabella. So thank you so much for this content. I'm pretty sure the audience found it of value throughout the presentation. We were already receiving a few questions, so we already have those. Um, with that, I just want to say we will finish the recording right now.